Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to tie another fly using material that I found um, actually on the ground at Home Depot. So I found this strapping. I showed this before. Um, but I found another one and it has a different, had a different color in it. This bright pink. So I thought I would take it and use it. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to use this this pink. I loaded it on this bobbin so I can use it and then I've got this orange that I'm going to use and I've got some green hackle I'm going to throw on there uh, kind of in the spirit of bright crazy Easter colors and then uh, I've got this um, uh, marabou that I'm going to tie on so I'm going to start with of course the base layer oh and this is a hook that I found also so I'm using a lot of found materials something I like to do I'm going to put a base layer on the uh, on the hook. Just cover the shank of the hook here. And go all the way to the bend here, just off of it. There. What I want to do with this is uh, I'm going to tie in the marabou as a tail like that and I'm going to use the body to help build the, um, I'm going to use the rest of the feather to build the body so it's a little bit thicker uh, and then I'm going to use the some of the pink um, some of the pink tied in to the white to mix in for color so go ahead and get this I'm going to make that about the length of the about the length of the hook. And then I'm just going to wrap forward. Give a little bit of room at the head for there still to be some place to tie the head off. Just trim that off. I'm just going to cover this with thread. And at the end, uh, I always like to take this under the tail. And it kind of helps it stay popped up. Although Marabou doesn't have a tendency to lay down, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take a few loops so I just took a few loops there and the only reason I did that is so I'd have several pieces the same length. trim that or not trim it but cut it cut the loops turn it over Do the same on the other side and now I'm just going to separate that and tie it on either side of my tail it's kind of rough right now but I'll brush it out orange against this pink is pretty funky but it's kind of the point I guess okay I'm gonna tie this in this is my the one attached to the bobbin This way, tie it off facing that way. It's kind of a juggling act when you're doing that. Okay, 
now. I need to tie this stuff in up front. And I always like to keep this stuff on top of the hook so we can kind of pull up on it as you're wrapping. It keeps it on top because you don't want to build too much bulk underneath the hook and then have it get in the way of the hook point. Keep it on top of the hook. And usually also bugs uh, and different things are kind of humpback more so and they have their legs underneath so it kind of goes along with that shape as well. So again I'm going to trim this <clears throat> back a little bit back of the head here just to make sure that I don't clog up my tie off area at the towards the the eye of the hook. So come back down here, do a few more wraps. Now I'm going to specifically tie with orange on the butt of this between the butt and the tail. So it has a bright, kind of bright orange spot in the middle of the pink. And then I'll move it forward and I'll do the same thing at the head. I just wanna, I've got a little bit of pink showing here. I wanna cover that up at least. I have a solid part of orange. This orange is just so thin that it's hard to cover that with wraps, so I should get it right there. And that should be good enough for what I'm making. And then I'll wrap forward. Okay. Now with my my pink thread. Oh, and by the way, when I did this, when I took this off of the mix, uh, off of the material that I found, uh, it's real stringy, so I waxed it to help it kind of stay together on the fly so it wouldn't be all over the place. I'm also going to spin it some. So it tightens it up. And I'm just going to make several wraps here. Once again, for those of you that watch my videos, you know, um, sometimes I tie flies that are based on recipes, I guess you would say. Um, old, very old tried and true flies. Um, one of the oldest published books that's out there um, is the treaty on treaties on um, fly fishing. And it talks about, in the book, it talks about different people and where they fish and what they catch and the kinds of flies that they catch it on. And so a lot of flies are based on those, that old, very old book from like the, what is it, the 17th century or maybe even earlier, very old book. Um, so here I'm, as you can see, I'm starting to have some trouble with that material sliding forward. Um, and I didn't tie in a wire on this one, so I'm just gonna have to tie this off try to keep it from going everywhere. Now I've got some wraps. Usually if you're tying on a piece of material onto a hook, all it takes is like two or three wraps to hold it down. But since this thread is so thin compared to what I'm tying down, I'm just taking more wraps than usual. Um, so what I want to do here is uh, I still have a feather to tie in. I'm going to decide between these two different types of feathers. I'm going to put it on there and see what it looks like. And then <clears throat> once I do that, I'm just going to um, you know, tie it off and make a considerable orange head uh, on the nose here. But for now, I'm just going to tie this down so I have something flat to tie to. So I'm just working here to get the thing covered evenly. And this is something I do pretty often. <laughs> I have a tendency not to make very good heads on my flies when I make them big like this. Um, so, but that turned out okay. Uh, so now I want to compare these two pieces of feather. So this is, 
I, I really don't know what this kind of feather is called. I don't know if that's a blood feather or what, <clears throat> but compared to this one, which is a hackle, maybe they're both both hackles, I don't know. But you can see this one is very webby and meaty, and then down here at the bottom it's real fluffy, so it almost has a little bit of this marabou mixed in. And then this one is real wiry, kind of. The webbing is very thin on it. So if I put this around the top, I get a little bit of a green hue to it, which is kind of crazy looking. But if I put this one around it, I don't have to doctor this feather up to do this, but it gets a really big, chunky one. And I'll usually like the chunky one, so I think that's the way I'm going to do it. Maybe it's because I'm a chunky one. That's why I like chunky ones. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this feather and pull these barbs so that they come off of uh, the shaft of the feather. Or the quill, I guess it would be. So you just pull it off like that. And the reason for that is when you go to wrap it around, it gives you a clean edge to wrap against the hook um, versus having, you know, if you tried to wrap it this way with the feather going down towards the hook, you would cover up a lot of the, uh, a lot of the barbs. So I'm just cleaning it off some, just pull against the direction that it grows out. Um, and that leaves you with this piece here. It almost looks like a old school quill that, you know, someone would write with. But, um, so then what you do is you just tie in, you take a chunk like this, and I'm going to actually snip off some of this end. Come on. My scissors are getting dreadfully dull. Dreadfully dull. There. Okay. So now I have that little stump at the end. I'm going to take this and I want it to lay so that they turn the curve back this way. So with that I will So I pull the rest of the barbs back away from there. I'm gonna lay it down here. I'm gonna tie in. And I want to hold all these barbs back so they don't get in the way when I'm tying in. So I got you know, four good little wraps there. I'm going to come back and snip off this extra that's sticking out so it doesn't get in the way of the eye of my hook. And then I'm just going to leave my thread there. And I'm going to take this and just very carefully, um, because this is the end that I tied on is very thin, I'm just going to wrap around as many turns as I can get and still have feathers sticking up. And I'll try to make it so that nothing covers another part. Oh, sorry about that shake. That is not an earthquake even though I'm in California. Uh, that was just me bumping into the stand. Texas people, there are not earthquakes very often or you don't just run around feeling earthquakes all the time. And when they do happen, it doesn't always happen where the ground breaks open, uh, just so you know. Okay, so now I'm just going to go around a few times. I'm going to cut this loose there. I need to hurry because my battery's at 10%. Okay, I'm going to pull this back here. And now I'm just going to really cover this head so it's nice and bright orange. It's going to be a crazy looking fly. A little bit crazy. I need to mash this part of the hook, or part of the, um, sorry, part of the feather quill down so it doesn't become a big chunk on the front of the, of the head. Okay, so I'm getting a good kind of bullet shaped head here. I think that's pretty good right there. I'm going to use my whip finishing tool. You lay it in like that, you wrap over, and it twists the string around itself. One, two, three, four, five, and then you just let it tie down. Once you do that, you snip it off. And real quick, get some clear nail polish. 
and dab off the extra. Let me set this down. I'm gonna pull these barbs back and coat that head like that. And I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna come down here on this orange in the back and do the same thing just because I want to. But you just want to be careful not to get any on the feathers, the feathers themselves, because it'll make it so it doesn't do what it's supposed to do in the water. And whenever it starts doing things it's not supposed to do, um, the fish stop biting it. So uh, now I'm going to take my I've got uh, kind of a beard brush here. I'm just going to kind of brush through this pink and see if I can get it to flare out some. Because if I can get it to break apart and mix in with the marabou, it'll be better, I think. And if I if it turns out that I don't like this pink, I can always go in and trim it off and just have white and orange and pink and green and all that. Um, should I decide that's what I want to do. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. Just brush through all that, try to get it to separate out. And it's not beautiful, it's not amazing. But it's a fly made out of free materials. Well, some free materials and some bought. But um, just shows you what you can do when you find things and you're thinking about <laughs> fly tying all the time, even at work. There, that's a pretty good fluff. I have a feeling that would probably catch um, at least a perch. <laughs> so I'm going to trim this off a little bit right here. So this whole thing is the same length that and then just kind of refluff it yeah that would definitely catch some fish you have this green here that's a contrast to the to the rest of the fly you got the pink and the orange going and there we go and I really don't know what I'm gonna call that fly um, maybe it's the Easter special <laughs> so anyway uh, thanks to those of y'all that are watching I've seen a lot of people tonight watching that um, I haven't seen on before so I don't know if you guys watch it whenever it's um, not actually live but now it's live um, so I appreciate you taking some time and and watching my hobby <clears throat> hopefully it's interesting for you um, if nothing else I like to turn on fly tying on YouTube and um, <laughs> fall asleep to it <laughs> actually so sometimes I take naps watching fly tying videos but anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed it I hope you're interested in in what I do I've got several fly tying videos online. Uh, if you go to YouTube and search Quiet Man 28, I've got, I think this might be my 42nd video, maybe 43, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, just go and check them out. I've got some short ones and some long ones, and they're all kind of the same way. Sometimes I tie um, old school flies that have been tied for hundreds of years. And sometimes I tie flies that I just make up on the spot. So um, hope you enjoy both kinds. And um, that does it for me for tonight. Have a good night, and we'll see you later.